Stick an OU head. All right, today we're here. We're going to do a heat pump uh, retro. This is a 30 year old system that I and Tom put in about 30 years ago. It's been uh, the unit here has been replaced once at 17 years and we're now going to replace it again with the Ingrams unit we got from Ingrams. Uh, it's a McRae three and a half ton. Um, we're going to do it a little different. This system in the past has been pressurized with uh, an expansion tank and a water makeup system. As you can see there's a lot of clutter and plumbing in the way that with the new install we're going to do away with this and go in with the uh, QT pump station which simplifies uh, everything it takes it to a non-pressurized ground loop. We have a, an unconventional ground loop outdoors. Uh, 30 years ago it was thought bigger was better and so and actually in reality it has been. We have about 1200 feet of 2 inch polybutylene pipe uh, in the ground outdoors. Uh, we have it half of it at 6 foot and the other half of that loop comes back in at 4 foot. So instead of running the hot water tank off of the McRae heat pump we elected to buy a heat pump hot water tank from Lowe's made by General Electric. I'm just throwing that in there. It has really nothing to do with uh, Ingram's but we're not going with that option. We're going to try this. We think it would probably be a little more efficient. Less plumbing. Simplifying the whole operation. Uh, it's about um, what nine o'clock in the morning. We spent a couple hours getting supplies and we hope to have this wrapped up by the end of the day. So, anything you want to say, Tom? Yeah, we're going to start back up here with the PVC from the existing pipe that was put in about 30 years ago. We're going to cut this off back here and we're going to retool it so that it comes down to the one inch pipe that uh, we use in this new system. So, all this, we're going to start here, take all this stuff out. Uh, at one time, we had about a 250 gallon. Uh, solar panel hot water assist tank here. When it shut craps we couldn't afford to replace the tank so we just took all that out. A lot of this stuff you see up here when we took out those tanks we just cut off and capped those lines and left them there and now it's just left a major hodgepodge of piping and tubing and insulation up in there and when we're done with it today uh, all this will go away and it'll look like it should be looking a lot cleaner. Uh, as you can see those pumps, um, Grunfoss pumps, they've been in there 30 years never replaced them. But they're at the point now that they're probably going to go away with this new system and the holding tank. through the day here we've gotten as you can see all the equipment out that we're replacing most importantly the heat pump itself and the McRae heat pump is going to now go in this hole it's a little bit wider but this is uh, electronic air cleaners about the same height so we're able to uh, move that around to meet up with the 
inlet on the side of our new unit. Um, we're going to uh, be putting all new plumbing in and installing our QT pump center approximately in this location. So here we are with everything out now. You've seen it with it in and now everything's out. Recycle tires that they actually make for stalls and for horse stalls. Both had a piece a little bit bigger than the unit itself, so it'll cushion it, take some of the vibration away from the unit, maybe make it a little quieter. We've got a piece of this to put underneath the unit itself. We've got another piece that we'll put underneath our tank system. Right here, we're uh, I'm just going over the PVC part a little bit for people that are not real familiar with using it all the time but have used it before. What we do is we take and uh, we use a miter saw, compound miter saw with a thin carbide blade on it. We cut our pieces in that saw and it makes a nice clean smooth cut. You want to make sure you remove all the burrs and debris out. And Then when you're cleaning the ends it's very important to make sure you go around the block two or three times don't hurry this operation here. Make sure that you do a real good job cleaning the edge of the pipe. Then we take the glue, knock gobs of glue, just make a nice thin coat of glue over the area you primed with the purple primer. Uh, same way on the inside of this fitting you're pulling together. Take the two fittings, put them together, do a couple turns like that, hold it for a second. As you can see on the inside, I'm completely seated to the bottom of that elbow. Now what we have here is a joint that's actually stronger than the pipe you're using. This particular pipe, we're putting it on our return side from our ground loop outdoors. And it's coming back into the QT pump bench. Right here, we're coming across the ceiling. We're actually in a basement here. So I'm going to put the next piece on. This is returning from outside. Comes into the pump bench. So this is actually, if you call it a return, it's the loop return to the pump bench, which is actually supplying the pump bench. Uh, we've elected to put valves in two different locations in case the need arises. You can shut this valve off and um, actually pull the pump bench out of there if you needed to, to for some reason. We just decided that lots of valves are a good idea. Past experience tells us that. Yeah.
we're here today. It took us a little longer than a day to get our system together. We ran into a couple of technical difficulties, but all in all, we only spent probably a day and a half on the actual labor of this retro. As you can see now, it's all cleaned up on this side where all of the old uh, piping came in from the old system and the air scoop and the air tank. So we basically cleaned all this up and we put in our heat pump uh, hot water tank made by GE, which has been working flawlessly. That's the first thing we did. Uh, we're finishing up right here on the QT pump bench. I'm going to add a little more water to the fill line. I think we got it burped pretty well. Um, we've ran it now for about 24 hours. Uh, we've ran heat and cool. Uh, it seems to be functioning very well. Uh, you can see how much cleaner everything looks plumbing wise. Uh, with the QT pump bench, we cleaned up the electrical and ran it in some uh, flexible conduit from the unit, unit on over the top. Um, this pretty much concludes our installation of the McQuay three and a half ton water source heat pump. Uh, it's a lot quieter than the Florida unit that was in here. And the one thing we noticed uh, was the fan on this unit is uh, twice the size of the floor unit of the same BTUs. Now, I really don't know how they did that, but we're moving a lot more air. This is a two-story home. And in the farthest section, we've got good airflow. So everything's worked real well. We have minimal problems. We're hooked back into a 30-year-old ground loop. And we are cooling right now as I speak. Very nice. We hooked up um, our local energy company has a program where they have a stat that they come out and put in for free and they will cycle the compressor during peak times in the summertime, save us energy and it helps them with their grid. Uh, it's made by Honeywell, it's a very nice thermostat. So that pretty much concludes everything with Tom Gibson install here. Uh, Hope you kind of enjoyed seeing the before and after. We just made sure that we took our time and did all of our connections correctly and we had no leaks. So, thank you.